As we make a transition between verses uh, 19, 20 in Colossians chapter 1 and into the next section of 21 through 23, um, I want to just start in 19, work back through verse 20. We really focused on verse 19 in the last study where it says, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. But that moves straight into verse 20 as it continues the sentence, and through him to reconcile all things to himself, whether in heaven or on earth, um, making peace by the blood of his cross. And so um, the best way to understand this little passage here is by sort of rearranging word order just to make it a little bit more explicit and clear. So where it says, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, really what you can say was all the fullness of God, or God, so God, was pleased to dwell in Christ, right? For in Christ, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. Or in other words, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell in Christ. And then verse 20, and through him to reconcile all things to himself. Okay, so you could rearrange that word order too. So you'd say, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell in Christ and to reconcile all things to himself through Christ, right? And so this is God the Father, God the Spirit acting through the Son. Everything that God does, everything that God does, God does as a triune God. So if the Father does something, the Father does that uh, in concert with the Son and the Spirit. So they're never acting um, apart or uh, in opposition to one another. Okay, so God the Father is in Christ reconciling all things to himself. Okay, so for all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell in Christ and through Christ reconcile all things to himself. And it says, whether in heaven or on earth. In other words, it's not just only people, right? It's all of creation that God is reconciling to himself through Christ, okay? So he reconciles human beings, us, and he reconciles the earth and everything that is in it because those things were given to man as his dominion. We're, our sin is what plunged the world and the universe into chaos and darkness. And so in Christ, all the fullness of God is pleased to dwell and through Christ to reconcile all things in earth and in heaven to himself. And it says making peace by the blood of his cross. In other words, where there was hostility, between mankind and God because of our sin, because the uh, in the creation, right? Because it was under the dominion of man. And when man fell into sin, the creation fell into sin. And then that dominion was handed over to Satan. Okay, and so the, the dominion of this world has been under a fallen man and under Satan. Okay, and so where all that hostility existed, God has made peace. So in, in Christ, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through Christ to reconcile to himself all things on earth and in heaven. Okay, so everything, humankind, the earth, the creation, the sea, the, the plants and the animals, all of it, and the universe, okay, everything in creation reconciled to himself through Christ. Everything that was broken will be made new. And this is the picture of the eternal state, of the new heavens and the new earth at the end of the age when Christ returns and judges the living and the dead. And, and he makes all things new, a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells, as Second Peter chapter 3 says. Okay, And it, and it goes on to kind of um, explicate this, explain this a little more deeply in verse 21. It says, and you, okay, so and you, pointing to you, to the Colossian church, to the believers there who have already received Christ, who have received this redemption. He says, and you who were once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. In other words, the hostility existed um, between you and God. Okay, so he, through him, he's reconciled, he's reconciled all things to himself in heaven and on earth. And he's, and he's tying this now again in verse 22. He says, um, you, 21, 22, he says, you who were once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach for him. And so what this is saying in this whole section here is that in Christ, the fullness of God was pleased to dwell through Christ to reconcile all things to himself in heaven and on earth. And he's making peace by what? By the blood of his cross. In other words, that blood is paying the penalty. It's handling the whole penalty uh, of sin, of God's wrath upon sin. God's wrath upon sin poured out in Christ in order to, to purchase or redeem all of creation back to himself. And that's why in the final judgment, everyone who stands before God in the final judgment, 
covered in the blood of Christ, cleansed by the blood of Christ, stands robed in the righteousness of Christ. And that's what he's saying here. He says he's reconciled you in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above, above reproach before him. Okay? So when you stand covered in the blood of Jesus, redeemed, right? By the, by the blood of the cross, he's made peace between you and himself. Now you've been reconciled and brought near to God in Christ. He's made peace by the blood of his cross. You stand before him, clothed in the blood of Christ, in the righteousness of Christ, holy and blameless and above reproach. And so on that day of judgment, those who are covered by the blood of Jesus, clothed in the righteous robes of Jesus' righteousness, you are above reproach, holy and blameless before him, and everyone else stands before him and, and is judged for their sin. In that day, everything is accomplished. God shows his mercy, and he shows himself just. So he is both just in his judgment of sinners, and he is the justifier of those who have faith in Christ Jesus, right? Because he's made peace through the blood of his cross. In other words, God himself in Christ, paying the penalty for our sins and those who receive that forgiveness in him by grace, by by faith, uh, by grace through faith, um, we receive the, the benefit of that. And so God is shown to be just in that he judges sin, um, both in his son on the cross and also on those who do not receive Christ. Um, and he's also showed to be a justifier and merciful and gracious toward those of us um, who have been redeemed by the blood of Christ. He says, so you, So he says in 21, and you who were once alienated, hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. And then he says this, if indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven and of which I, Paul, became a minister. And so he's, he's kind of adding a caveat here, right? That your salvation, your redemption, um, your, your adoption, your um, place as a child of God is not earned through your continuance and your steadfastness and your stability, um, but that it's proven through it, right? James says um, that, that, that faith without works is dead. And when he says that, he's not saying that our salvation is by works. What he's saying is that our faith is proven by our works. That genuine faith in Christ will produce change in our life. It'll produce good works. It'll, it'll produce a change in our character and in our heart and in the, the, the affections of our heart. The things that we love and live for and care about. Um, these things will change based upon um, the genuineness of our faith. And this is something similar. He's saying that, that, that basically our faith in Christ and the genuineness of our salvation, the, rec the trueness of our reconciliation with the Father through Christ is proven by the fact that we continue in faith, that we continue in stability in the faith and in steadfastness in pursuing Christ and not shifting from the hope of the gospel. In other words, as these other people come into the Colossian church from outside, these Judaizers and these, these cult, uh, you know, pagan cultists come in um, pushing these other agendas and these other things and trying to add to Christ these other things. He's saying the, the trueness of your faith and of your reconciliation um, with the Father in Christ is in your is in your stability in your faith, in the continuing of your faith, in the steadfastness, in, in not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard. So the one that Epaphras preached to you, that gospel, the simple gospel of faith in Christ um, unto salvation, um, if you don't shift from that and begin to, to, to look to the law, look to circumcision, look to feast days, new moons, and Sabbaths, if you don't begin to look to worshiping angels and to seeking spiritual visions, other planes of enlightenment by worshiping demonic spirits and, and worshiping the sun and the moon and the stars, if you don't shift from that simple gospel that Epaphras shared with you, right, that proves the trueness and the steadfastness, the reality of your faith and of the trueness of your reconciliation to the Father, um, that he has truly made peace in you by the blood of his cross. And so he says, if indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all of creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister, of which I, Paul, became a servant. Remember, I'm always going to remind you that word minister means servant. It's not someone who's elevated. It's one who serves. The one who would be greatest of all will be the servant of all, right? And so, um, yeah, this is that passage here. For in Christ, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through Christ to reconcile to himself all things in, on earth and in heaven, looking uh, to that, that eternal state, making peace by the blood of his cross. And in you 
and you, okay, you Colossians, you uh, Californians, you Americans, you uh, every nation of the world who believe in Christ, you believer who were once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil things, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. Praise God, right? That is powerful and beautiful truth that we have been pre presented. He has reconciled us. It's not on me to reconcile myself to God. Um, God has already done the work on my behalf in Christ, and I simply come to Christ and submit uh, to his hand and to his redemption in my life. So um, he's presented me by his work on the cross, um, holy and blameless and above reproach before my Father who is in heaven. Um, and Lord, help me to continue in my faith, stable and steadfast and not shifting from the hope of the gospel that I heard and which has been proclaimed under all creation from the time of the Apostle Paul to now um, and, and to, the, to the day that you return and under which um, Paul says, of which I, Paul, became a minister. So God bless you. Continue in the next uh, message.